guest. And it's not because she's from Brooklyn, not only because she's from Brooklyn, but because you never know what she'll say uh, on our hit show, which just started its ninth season. So let's take a look at a clip. Mr. Conte, young Mr. Conte over here, he doesn't deny that he was there. No. And even threw an egg or two. Is that right, Mr. Conte? Uh, yes, Your Honor, I threw one, but it, it hit my own car. Actually. Well, that was. Or I, it was so long ago. I just know it didn't hit the, Joey, anything. Joey, Joey, say nothing else. Yes, Your Honor. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Judge Judy. Look marvelous. Thank you, my dear. Not a fashionista, but Oh, no, you, good. you could be at the Hilfiger show in a minute. Pretty Forget good. It. No, 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 no. I'm missing about five inches. So, well, <laughs> let's not go there. Anyway. Um, that might be interesting if we went there, but it's morning. It's too early for yes. that. Anyway, um, so, so uh, what, you know, yesterday I had the Duchess of York on. Today I have Judge Judy. I couldn't, what do I call Duchess? What do you call it? What do I call, do I call you Your Honor? How do I do this? If you're comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there was a fellow in family court when I was a sitting judge who was from India. And in India, they call judges your worship. Oh. Now, I really like you that. You like that one. All right. I really like oh, your, your worship. Your worship sounds but, good. But Judy will do. Okay, Judy. So Judy the will. last time we met, you were actually in my court. Yes, I know. That's right. I huh? know that. That was probably six or seven years I ago. I think it's about six years seven. ago, yeah. And, and, and you know, I, I think we have a thing here in Brooklyn where every year they crown somebody the king of Brooklyn. And I was, in, I was the king of Brooklyn, and uh, Judy was in my, my court. I was in the court. That was, that was a, that was oh, a look, I got a picture of me putting on my crown. Oh, I yeah, crowned I myself, which is kind of weird, but. We both, as a matter of fact, that day got, we didn't get a star in the Hollywood Walk of Fame, right. but we got our leaf print with our name on it right. in the Brooklyn Botanical Gardens. And it's better. I, and I, it's better. I, I, I want you to know, some, I don't know if you know this, folks, in the Botanical Gardens in Brooklyn, it's a beautiful place, but there is a Brooklyn Walk of Fame. Yes. And it's all people who were born in Brooklyn, and you get like this little leaf in a, in a, in a stone. It's really beautiful. It's, a, it's like a grotto. Oh, it's, it's magnificent. I was very proud of that. I, I, mean, I was too. When we rode around Grand Army Plaza in an open-air bus, <laughs> yes. right? We did. We had a good yeah, time. It was, it was a, a great, wonderful day. It was really some. So you, you're going you're gonna to start the ninth season of your show. I Would mean, you believe that nine years? Incredible. Years. incredible. No. Tony, when I, when I was first approached to do this program, to do Judge Judy, sure. not this program, no. Judge Judy program. Uh, I was a sitting judge, and at that time, you know, earning a decent salary, civil servant, looking forward to a nice, maybe two-bedroom condo on retirement someplace in Florida. And I had been a civil servant for almost 25 years, right. and I loved being a family court judge. And when they ultimately made the offer and they said, listen, we'd like to give it a shot, my husband said to me, are you crazy? <laughs> are you out of your mind? You're going to give up this job, this appointment. You you're have a another judge. You're a, mean, judge. you're a judge. What are you going to do? You're not going to be a success. Hundreds and hundreds of people have tried mm -hmm. it and gone. Mm -hmm. And I was really hoping when I started that after six weeks, I'd still be on the air. Right. So it's absolutely it's amazing. amazing to oh, me I mean, that nine years later. It's absolutely amazing. No, I mean. You know, today shows come and go, and I, and, and to be on that long, I, I only not wish. this one. This one's well, going to be hope, on for you know, a long time. I, I have my hopes. Yes. Uh, but you know, I'll tell you something. Uh -huh. How do you how do you keep it fresh? I mean, nine years is a long time. I did eight years on Who's the Boss, and, and right. we were we were running into each other a lot. And before that, you know? and before that taxi. Yeah, I mean, I had a time. couple of jobs. You, you know, had a couple of good jobs. <laughs> but uh, but how do you keep it fresh? I mean, how do you approach it? Do you have an approach to? Or do you just stay the course, as somebody well, around you know, says it, all the time it's, now? It's an interesting process. My show is an interesting process because I have different characters every day. Right. You know, and, and sometimes teams of different characters. And I find that people's problems, while they are unique to them, are really generic to everybody. So, and the personalities are so different, so they really keep it fresh. They feed me right, my material. Right, you get your material. Now, right. uh, you know, when I watch the show, sometimes I think the people that uh, dress better get off more, or they do better in the court. Well, that, you know, is that, I, I mean, speaking of fashion, you know, <laughs> I sometimes wonder what part of the brain people use when they go to court dressed as if they were going to the beach. Right. Yeah. And 
I'm going to go back to the family court, my early family court days. There was a wonderful lady who was the first black uh, judge, female judge mm -hmm. in the United States. Her name was Jane Bolin. Okay. And she was a fabulous lady, and I admired her so. And she ran a very tight courtroom. She had a court clerk whose name was Benny Caballero. Look how I remember these names. Yes, I got to get yeah. rid of some of the stuff <laughs> in my head. <laughs> anyway, because we're talking about 1972, 1973, and when women would come into her courtroom dressed like they were going to the beach, you know, in spaghetti straps with their bazooms yeah. hanging out. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. She would just use this finger, and she would point to Benny, and she would go like this. And Benny would go in the back and get a trench coat. <laughs> and put the wow. trench coat around the lady. And, it, you know, you take a little from everybody that you've worked right. with, and I adopted that. So, some, so things never change. That was 30 years ago. And sometimes people come to the television courtroom. Do you think it's a respect thing, or you think it's just uh, absent-mindedness, or got, the way we live, or I the way we are? I think they've got mush for brains. Uh-huh. <laughs> Honestly, I think right. their brains are a little mushy. Okay. okay. So um, when we come back, uh, Judge, you wanna, we wanna, we're gonna, what, what is it? You, wanna, you have well, a fantasy, right? Well, it, well, when, when you invited me to come on the show, when we were talking about what we were gonna do for a couple of segments, I said my dream would be to play host and you play guest, because that's okay. one thing I've never done. So when we come back, it's going to be my opportunity to question Tony Danza. <laughs> First guest as the lovable host of his brand new talk show. But who can forget the first time we saw him as the lovable cab driver on his first sitcom, Taxi? Let's take a look. This is Lucius Franklin. He, he played on one of the greatest football teams of all time. He played alongside Terry Bradshaw, Franco Harris, Lynn Swan, John Stone. Tony, to be quite honest, I only practice alongside of those guys. I was third string. I was wondering why I never heard of you. <laughs> So nice to be here. What a beautiful set. Isn't you. this a magnificent really set? Really nice and a great looking audience too. I like that. You see how easy it is to be a guest? Well, I was a little nervous you about this. You see how this. easy it is to be a guest? So you're going to have to indulge me because this is my first time as a host. This well, is I was my ask you, first time. How's it feel day. having a, a talk show? Well, I get to have, I get to have questions oh, written oh, out for wow. me and get to put my glasses on and say... Well, I'm, I hope I'm prepared. This we week was your first week of doing live television. Yes. And I tape my show, so I get a chance to, you know, look at it and mm. say, oh, the hair looks lousy, right, the right, face right. looks lousy, you know, get rid of that shot. Live television, you don't get a chance to do that. Mm. You know, you got a hair standing straight up, it's going to stand up for 15 minutes. So how did you feel, and what was the most nerve-wracking thing about doing live television? I, I don't know. You don't know? <laughs> no. No, that's when you get the bad guests, right? You're like, I don't know. No, um... That's, that's one of the most nerve-wracking Really, things you know, you, you, you have that long question, I go, yes. Yes, yes, good. <laughs> and we've seen those. Yeah, no, I, I, I'll be honest with you, though, uh, Judy. It's, uh, it's been so much fun to be back in New York. And, uh, you know, my kids were here. And, uh, I, you know, I, I, I ended up getting great reviews. Uh, from the kids? Tell me what well, they not, said. Well, not from the papers, but no, from the kids. tell me what the kids, yeah. from the, the papers, what too. Tell me what is they is said. I, I picked up the, uh, the, the bedspread, and I picked it up. And they left. They went back to L.A. to go back to school. So I picked up the bedspread, and... There was a little note from Emmy. It says, show is great, Dad. Congratulations. Then I went to get my toothpaste. To get my toothpaste, I opened up the drawer, and there was a thing from, from Katie. Congratulations, Daddy. We're so proud of you. And I was like, this is the greatest, you know. So, Isn't that wonderful? That's so what keeps been, you going. Yeah. So it's been, I mean, to answer your question, it's been an amazing thing. It goes by like in a dream. Uh, I and still it goes by in a minute. In a, in a minute. I can't right. believe we're doing, a, you know, the third show. And... And it's, it's the most fun I've ever had. I have a, an audience every morning. That, get, that feeds, your, yeah. feeds your love and, and feeds I'm your live, passion. And I'm live okay. in New York City. Okay. So you have not only the reputation, but I can tell everybody out there that it's true, that he is one of the nicest human beings, not only on television, but ever. What you see is a genuine, sweet, loving man. So tell you, me. You are a... You are a 
So what is it, Tony, that keeps you grounded? You have a family. First That's of all, you are a very kind host. <laughs> uh, all true. No, I, I, you know, I, uh, I think um, it comes from your parents, um, and it comes from trying to be a good example to your kids. So you, on the one hand, uh, I was very lucky to have two hardworking, committed parents. Uh, my mother used to say, uh, you know, every kid should have someone who's who's irrationally committed to their future, and she was, you know, that's the kind of parents I had. I saw them go to work every day. So they had a work ethic. They had a ter terrific work, work ethic. ethic. That and they you, gave you. And you, and you get me, and, and they wanted you to do better than they did. They wanted you to, uh, you know, my mother said, you gotta go to college, you gotta do, you And know, your you gotta... parents didn't go to college? No, my parents, uh, my, mo my mom's, uh, you know, from, born in Italy, and I'm not sure they graduated high school. It wasn't, we didn't talk about it much, but, uh, but in any case, they wanted you to do that. And then I think what happens is when you have children, you're hard pressed to, to live up to them. You know, you don't want to, you know, one of the things that, that works discipline wise with kids is that I know myself when I was a kid, I didn't want to disappoint my parents. Uh, I did sometimes, obviously. Yeah, sometimes but, that so, doesn't work yeah. today with kids. But, but, but that's the way it should be. And I think the, you know, the, the opposite is also true, that the parents should try not to disappoint their children. So I that's, do that. Well, that keeps you grounded. You think Brooklyn keeps you grounded? I think Brooklyn keeps me grounded. You know, I'm a, I'm a guy from the neighborhood. So, <laughs> you know, I just, uh, I'm excited to be back in it, too, let me tell you. Did, when you were a kid, you talked about your events, when you were a kid, did anybody... You know, I don't want to say anything. Yeah. Right now, you're, you're making me look real bad. You look pretty good in that seat there. <laughs> When you were a kid, you were terrific. When you were a kid, though, did somebody say to you, Tony, you have potential. You have acting potential. Because we've got some pictures here of you as a oh, kid. God. Cute. And these horse pictures, everybody's got these yeah, horse pictures. Everybody's got that picture in Brooklyn, city, yes. Right? Let's see. Right over here. Yeah. That's Tony that. Danza in his horse picture. Yeah. In his horse no, picture. Everybody had that picture, yeah. And these are the... Beautiful parents. These are my parents. Oh, these are that was my first parents. communion on Euclid Avenue. Yeah. We have to say goodbye. We have to break for one minute to get on to, to a commercial announcement. I want to thank Tony for being oh, here today with me. Thank you for me. having thank me, Judge Judy. It was great. Judy, ladies and gentlemen.